Hello Year 10, this is Mr. Radmull speaking and this is the Particles and Radiation 2 Triple Science Topic Lesson 4. So uh, first up we're going to be um, pushing on with some ideas about ionising radiation. So I've put um, a video just going through the basics uh, as a quick revision. I'll also put some BBC Bite Size stuff to read up as well if um, your mind is a bit fuzzy when trying to remember these key ideas. So driving question is where is the most radioactive place to live? And here are the three types of ionizing radiation. Um, what's missing underneath the yellow boxes? So driving question, write it down please. Okay, so you've got alpha on the top, you've got gamma on the bottom, in between you've got beta radiation, paper can stop alpha, lead can stop gamma, and it is a thin sheet of aluminium which can stop beta. Okay, let's just quickly recap some of these ideas. Okay, so when we talk about ionizing radiation, we're talking about uh, radiation which comes from the middle of an atom, the nucleus. So it's sometimes called nuclear radiation. There are three main particles that we talk about. There's the alpha particle, which is two protons and two neutrons. Now, when we talk about something being ionizing, we talk about it being able to knock electrons off atoms to make an ion as we can see here. An alpha particle is the most ionizing of the three particles, which means it's the best at knocking off electrons and also can be the most damaging. It's also the least penetrating of the three. It can only, it can only um, get through a few centimeters of air, can be stopped easily by skin or paper. So uh, the alpha particle, in terms of what it is, very quickly, it is two protons and two neutrons bonded together, which is the same as the nucleus of a helium atom. So on to beta. So beta, again, it's nuclear radiation, so it comes from the nucleus, the middle of an atom, uh, and it is a high-energy electron. Now, the beta particle is middle ionizing and middle penetrating. It can get through a few, few meters of air, can be stopped by aluminium, and it's, it's okay. At, it's not as good at knocking off electrons as an alpha particle. It's better than gamma. And last but not least, gamma radiation. Gamma radiation, as we know from studying the electromagnetic spectrum, is a high energy EM wave. Again, comes from the nucleus. And now, gamma radiation, the most penetrating, can get through lots of stuff, can only be reduced in intensity by thick lead. And it is the least ionizing of the three. So there you have it alpha, two protons, two neutrons. Most ionizing, least, most ionizing, least penetrating. Beta, high energy electron. Gamma, high energy EM wave. Least ionizing, most penetrating. So let's just um, stop, bring these ideas together. So which of these statements is the porky pie, which is East London slang for lie? Spot the porky pie, pause the video. Okay, it is in fact C. Gamma is a high energy electromagnetic wave, that's true, but it is the least ionizing of the three. Okay, so moving on. So measuring radioactivity. How do we measure how radioactive something is? Well, first up, radioactivity is random process. It's completely random when uh, the nucleus gives off an ionizing radioactive particle. There's no pattern to it. So we measure radioactivity using what's called a Geiger counter. 
and if you switch on your Geiger counter and it starts measuring radioactivity, you'll hear a series of beeps, but the beeps won't be regular because radioactivity is random. So it will be beeping at random times. And every time it beeps, beeps, it's detecting an ionizing particle. Now we measure radioactivity in counts per minute. So when we measure radioactivity, we start the stopwatch. We need to use a stopwatch. And then we start the Geiger counter. And we count how many beeps we hear in one minute. Now the Geiger counter will also have a digital display which will count how many times it detects an ionizing particle. And then because its radioactivity is random, uh, when you take a radio user guide counter to measure radioactivity in counts per minute, you must always do it at least three times an average. OK, so. Very quickly, measuring radioactivity using a Geiger counter. Where is the porky pie? Pause the video, please. OK, it was in fact D. Radioactivity is random, so readings should be repeated and averaged. OK, so when you turn on a Geiger counter, even when there's nothing you think radioactive in the room, you will find the Geiger counter starts beeping anyway, detecting radiation. So what is this radiation? If we haven't got any radioactive metals near us, what's going on? Well, this is called background radiation so there are low level sources of radiation all around us all the time and the radioactivity associated with these sources we call background radiation as you can see there are different sources of background radiation there's uh, the largest source is radon gas which escapes from the ground and gets into the air that counts for about 50%. You've got cosmic rays coming from the space. You've also got the sun, about 10%. Food and drink radio is radioactive as well, some, some more than others. You've got other radioactive substances in the ground, and you've also got medical, uh, you've got medical um, sources as well, because hospitals use radioactive sources for um for medical purposes you've also got nuclear weapons testing and nuclear reactors and you've also got um, air travel as well so uh just a word on food so two particular foods no need to worry uh only so this is only relative but two foods which are particularly more radioactive than other foods you've got brazil nuts and you've got bananas so radon uh, gas, which I said, uh, escapes from the ground, gets into the air. Uh, radon is an alpha emitter. Uh, you can see in this map of the UK that Cornwall actually happens to be um, the most radioactive, the highest in radioactivity when it comes to radon gas. You might find that some households in Cornwall actually have a radioactivity meter just to keep track of the radioactivity due to radon. So which of these is not a source of background radiation? Pause the video. Yep, so it is in fact radon gas is a source of background radiation, but it comes from the ground. It doesn't come from nuclear power stations. OK, so let's talk more about measuring radioactivity and bring in this idea of background radiation. So let's say we want to measure the radioactivity of a radioactive source, a metal that's very radioactive. We point our Geiger counter at it and we get 300 counts, 300 beeps every minute. Now that reading, that measurement is not me the measurement of the radioactivity of the source because we have to think about 
background radiation as well. So that 300 counts per minute is measuring the radioactivity of the source and background radiation together. So if we want to know what the radioactivity of the source is, we take our measurement of 300 counts per minute. We have to measure the background radiation without the source. Let's say that's 20 counts per minute. And we get 280 counts per minute is the radioactivity of our particular source. Now we call this the corrected count rate. So the corrected count rate uh, of a radioactive source is the measurement of radioactivity with the source minus the background radiation. So we're measuring the radioactivity of a source. We measure the background radiation three times an average, obviously, because radioactivity is random. We measure the radioactivity of the source three times an average, because remember it's random. We need to make sure that our um, results are reliable. And then take the rate, take the background radioactivity away from this reading. Okay, so wrap up the ideas, please pause the video. Okay, did you spot it? Year 10, it's D. So CPM, the unit of radioactivity is counts per minute. Now you can have a unit of radioactivity that counts per second or the Becquerel. Counts per minute is what we use in the lab because it makes it easier to obviously count the beeps. Okay, so last thing to talk about, doses of radiation, so a new unit. So when you receive a dose of radiation, uh, we use the unit of millisieverts, little m, capital S, little v. Okay, as you, and as as you might have spotted, it's a that we it, it, we use a thousandth of a sievert, which is another unit of, uh, dose of radiation. So, different activities involve different doses of radiation. The average dose, uh, the average dose that a person gets of radiation each year is about 2.7 millisieverts. And then, as you can see, there's kind of different things that you can do to get doses of radiation. Um, dental x-ray, 0.005. Uh, eating 100 grams of Brazil nuts, 0.01. Uh, chest x-ray, uh, 0.014. Interestingly enough, um, you are limited on how many x-rays you can have per year because of course every time you have an x-ray you get a dose of radiation and it, we need to make um in order to keep the risks minimal uh in terms of it possibly going on to develop cancer you'll only allow a certain number of x-rays per year uh, transatlantic flight is 0 0.08 uh because when you get in um get in the plane and you fly off into the uh, high up in, uh, in altitude, you're less protected by the atmosphere from cosmic rays. So you get a, a larger dose of radiation. Um, a nuclear power station, 0 0.18. That's if you were working in a nuclear power station, that's what you get per year. The radon dose in Cornwall, 6.9. As you can see, that's quite uh, large of an average. Uh, a nuclear worker in a year, uh, 20. That's the limit. So if you were to work in the nuclear industry, you would have to work at a limit of 20 millisieverts per year. Now, to give you an idea then of what um, would cause serious problems, if you get up to a thousand millisieverts, that's where there's a possible of radiation sickness kicking in and 5,000 millisieverts in a month is estimated you're at 50% risk of death. Okay, so there's some examples of doses of radiation there. So to bring these ideas together, please, for number one, describe, can you state some sources of background radiation? Sentence starter in red. For number two, explain, can you explain how background radiation could be measured? sentence starter in red. For use, can you explain how you can me uh, measure a corrected count rate of a radioactive source? 
and then for combine using just some uh, of the examples of radioactive doses in the table below can you explain the risks of working at a nuclear power station please okay so pause the video okay let's wrap it up so for describe examples of background radiation you can put food buildings radon in the air the sun and cosmic rays or anything else on the pie chart below for explain background radiation can be measured by using a geiger counter use a stopwatch to time one minute and count the number of beeps in one minute repeat two more times on average to get a result with units count units being counts per minute each beep is when a guy counter detects an ionizing particle. Make sure there are no radiation sources nearby. For use, so uh, measuring corrected count rate of a radioactive source, take the background radiation reading, set up the guy counter pointing towards a radioactive source, use the tongs to handle radioactive source, use a stopwatch to time one minute and count the number of beeps or use the counter and repeat two more times an average and then take away the background radiation count to get the corrected count rate. There's the example we went through at the bottom look. Okay, and comparing risk in terms of radioactive doses when working at a nuclear power station. So the extra dose of radiation received when working at a nuclear power station is 0.2 millisieverts a year. So then when explaining risk using this try and work in factors okay so this is a hundred times less than the exposure limit allowed it's five thousand times less than the dose that will cause radiation sickness and it's also less than a tenth of the average dose that someone receives in england okay so now copy and complete this uh, the plenary statement please And as ever, there is now a 10 question multiple choice quiz to be completed. Thank you very much, Year 10. I look forward to seeing you next lesson. Stay safe.